October 19th, 2020. Well, I'm still having these dreams pretty much almost every night. You know, the craziest thing is, is that I can remember these dreams vividly after I wake up, which is nuts because I could never remember my dreams five minutes after I wake up. I mean, I can see them right now. It's so vivid. I am standing center stage. I am singing this iconic song. It's a big theatrical event. I'm having this big 11 o'clock number. You know, I really feel like the universe is trying to tell me something and I cannot figure it out. You know who could figure it out? My mom. She probably would know exactly what it means. Whenever I had a bad audition or a negative experience in this business, she was always the first person I would call. She was a Broadway actress for many, many years, and she had done a bunch of Broadway shows, and obviously that rubbed off on me. And um, she was my go-to. I know that's what made us close all these years, our mutual love for the theater. I mean, she was close to my sister too, but just different, you know? I was on Facebook or something, I think it was Facebook or something this morning, and I, I saw a post that a couple of my friends were going back and forth on about some gala for Miss Saigon, I think it was last year, maybe it was two years ago or something. And let me tell you, <laughs> that sent me into a spiral of bitterness for the day. I'm not even kidding, it was like it all came rushing back. It was like it was yesterday. Oh, bitter, bitter I was. If you ask any actor, if they had one role that they were not cast in, that they knew in their heart of hearts that they were really right for and never did it, I bet you everyone could give you at least one example. For me, that was Miss Saigon. <laughs> I mean, my roommate was in it. Two of my best friends were in it. Some other friends of mine were in it. And we're just talking about the original cast. Me? Never did it. No. I mean, it was a no-brainer to me. And I used to think, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to do that show. Uh, no. No, you're not. You're not going to do it. God, I carried around that grudge for decades. It was heavy. <laughs> what are you going to do? I do miss it. Not so much New York, but performing. I miss half hour calls and I miss half hearing the orchestra days. tune up and the audience coming in and places call and the people. I really, really miss people. And you can't really explain it to somebody unless they've actually experienced it for themselves. But the Broadway community is such a special, special community and so proud and honored to say that I've been part of that community. That's what I miss most of all. <sighs> what do all these dreams mean? Oh, it's so frustrating. I just want to find out. <sighs> and all I can think of is maybe it's because I never had one. That moment. I never did get my 11 o'clock number. It just never happened. Asking as little as you can Little snip of a little man I know I'd give my life for you You didn't ask me to be born You why should you learn of a war or pain? 
to make sure that you're not hurt again. I swear I'd give my life for you. I've tasted love beyond all fear, and you should know it's love that brought you here. And in one perfect night, when the stars burn like new, I knew what I must do. I'll give you a million things I'll never own. I'll give you a world to conquer when you grow. You will be who you want to be. Reaching for him, I feel his shadow brush my head, but it's just moonlight on my bed. Was he a ghost? Was he a lie that made my body laugh and cry? Then by my side, the proof I see: his little one, gods of the sun, bring him. We'd like, like to, to call, call you back. back. <laughs>